so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's now go, uh, go back to our Abuja studio and continue the conversation on the issues of the cost of governance and pruning down the, uh, the cost of running government. I have now joining me, I will flip the coin and speak to a member of the APC and a former lawmaker, Mr. Kletus Auburn. Thank you so much, Mr. Auburn, for joining us tonight. How does this come to you, uh, the decision of the federal government? And perhaps you'll react to some of the things uh, that Mr. Osita Chidoka has said about the decision of the federal government on the cost of travels of uh, government officials. Well, uh, let me first of all say that uh, I wanted, uh, I don't like uh, getting engaged uh, in absentia, as uh, Abiola will say, to shave a man's head in his absence. It is difficult to do that. I, I had wanted an interactive session so that I can take on uh, Chidoka the way he went on these matters. First of all, one fundamental thing Nigerians should know today is that Osita Chidoka was not just a former minister. He's also the presidential spokesperson and uh, chief uh, agent of the presidential campaign for uh, uh, the last presidential election for the PDP. His admission today as a former minister and uh, commercial of the road safety, for me, is not just a recantation. As a Catholic, it is a confessional. He has made several confessions that Nigerians today must know, that there must be a difference between politics and facts. And facts are sacred. Opinion is opinionated, and it is free. Therefore, he said three fundamental things that I'm going to take on now. Unfortunately, he's not here for me to respond in his presence so I can interact. One of the things he said is about the fact that he's a knee jerk. He tried to uh, color it and use euphemisms to cover the very fundamental issues he has stated. That it, was an, it, it requires an act of courage for a sitting government to do what President Buhari and the APC have done today. The labor leader who left here to rush back to that negotiation was beaming with smiles. Under Abbasanjo, Jonathan, it was a civil war to negotiate. Even though the workers got it, most workers died in the process. He didn't admit that. Of the five negotiations and minimum wage changes in the history of our country from 1981 to date, I was a labor leader as well. I was not just a labor leader, but not in the NLC tradition, but in the academic tradition. I was chairman of the academic staff uh, union. But what I'm trying to say to you here is that Chidoka's submissions are to the effect that these issues should be fundamental. And you made the point that for you to make those changes, for you to make those changes, you will need to get into legislation and have to get through the, an act of parliament. The ones that are administrative, the ones that are administrative and within the confines and purview and within the administrative competence and jurisdiction of the president, he has so taken. For instance, don't forget that in 2015 when he came on board, this president had said that he wanted 25 ministers. But he was reminded, not just reminded, he was compelled by the constitutionality of representation under the Federal Character Commission law and under Section 7 sub 4 of the Nigerian Constitution that every state must have a minister. And like Oshita, Oshita uh, confirmed and confessed, there are agencies that were created out of necessity. And those agencies have become, for us, a Nigerian law. There are others that ought to be merged. For instance, you go on the Nigerian roads and you find several others, like road safety, you find VIO, you find federal patrol in the police, you find the uh, yellow fever, the one we call yellow fever, that is the traffic police, all those ones checking your documents and all that. Those things Russia had dealt with comprehensively. And again, he confessed and recanted that uh, Jonathan, who set up that Russia committee, Commission never was able to implement his own decisions like he did with the, uh, uh, the National Confab. Again, we come to the issue of the local travels that we were talking about as part of cutting costs. One of the things I rather think that would have cut costs should first to make it a principle, which was part of our, our own campaign. I talk now as a Nigerian or as an APC member. One of the things we promised that we have no business going on foreign uh, medicals. One of the things we also should do is that nobody who serves in public as a counselor, as a local government chairman, as a director in the state service or federal service or permanent secretary, as a minister of the federal republic, should have any of his children in a private school 
or studying abroad. That freedom is curtailed by the fact that you are saving the public interest. Therefore, you must set examples. Like El Rufai just did, you cannot have your child in a primary school in which there is no security and there is constant hijack and constant kidnapping. You won't have your streets leading to the school where your child is not being populated policemen. Therefore, I do feel that part of the cost of cutting costs also lies with the National Assembly and public officers such as ministers, senators, National Assembly members, permanent secretaries, directors. They cannot have more than one or two aides and their own allowances. For instance, you talk about security vote for the governor. What is he securing outside the police who are being paid? Why won't you give that money to the commissioner of police rather than give it to a governor who has no personal security and runs no state? Even if he runs a state police, you'll be able to pay for it. Today, people are asking that we should have security vote for a governor. What is that for? And governors are getting permanent salaries for retiring from government. While you are in government, you have a lot of visitors. Will you also receive the same number of visitors when you leave government? Those who have left government should be able to contest and tell Nigerians that life after government is not the same as life in government. Therefore, those kind of costs, as have been put, should be criminalized. You cannot tell me that as a retiring governor, you should take along with you, apart from taking your salary as consolidated, you should again be earning an income and getting the same number of retinue of staffers as you find in King Lear, where as a retired king who has surrendered power to his children, turns around to say that he must still go about with his retinue of staffers and uh, aco uh, uh, acolytes to go with him to everywhere he goes to. So part of cutting cost of government is one, reduce the number of eight of retired governors, sitting governors, take away their so-called security allowance since you still have the police and army and other security agencies run by the federal government. You should also have a situation where public officers from councillor down to the ministers to the senators should have none of their children schooling outside Nigeria. And if they must school in Nigeria, they should school in public schools. They should not have a choice. Until you leave government, you can send them to private school. So at those public schools that we all attended, all of them, nobody serving today in this government. In this government, very few of them, less than 1% or 0.001% ever attended a nursery school. Very few of them did because at our time, it was not like a nursery school. Nursery school became a contemporary issue. Uh, so Mr. send Mr. your Auburn. children to, to that public school where others are going. Mr. Auburn, one of the fundamental yes. things that he said uh, Mr. Osita, which I would like you to perhaps uh, round up with for us, is the fact that the, the percentage of what the president is cutting is not significant. That's one of the things that he said. If you look, for example, at Air Rufai's decision, uh, Air Rufai in the governor of Kaduna State is saying that for government officials, if you're going to live in a government-owned uh, properties, you have to live as though you want to buy it over that the days of uh, living in hotels and all of that are over. Those are some of the moves that are being made. Let me say this to you. From Obasanjo of PDP made this government and government running in Nigeria so terribly corrupted. We in the academics have what we call economic rent. In other words, you are living in a government house and government quarters or staff quarters. You should pay rent that is equivalent or a percentage of your salary. You can't pay me 30,000 and say I should be paying 45,000 naira rent. That is what we call economic rent. It should be rated in that manner. We negotiated this in the academia. Now, in the case of public servants and in the cost of paying these people and rating the percentage of what you should earn in addition for the 30,000 minimum wage, one of the points that he omitted which he didn't say to us, is that in negotiating and dealing with the issue of what a, a, uh, a permanent secretary or a senator should end, I want to say this to Nigerians. It is simply not about cutting the cost of those public servants. What is the percentage of people working in the public service? What is the percentage of what they live? What is the promise of housing? If one of the three cardinal things is housing, clothing and food is one of the three basic needs of humanity. Why will a public servant who is serving the public interest be made or punished is what, what my, one of my reverend fathers called structures of sin, right. in which the, in Abuja, for example, you have a messenger and a driver living in one man's country in Kubwa to come and clean the office before 7 o'clock before his boss reduces, whereas the boss who is driving into the office lives in Asokoro. That is a structure of sin. 
We have to reverse that and the corruption and the cost of living in the terms of housing, in terms of uh, transportation, must be put on the junior workers All right. who indeed run yeah. the government. Take Honorable. away the messenger, take away the drivers, government will go underground tomorrow morning if this strike goes on. That is the way it should go. All that right. to cut costs is not to punish the junior workers, but to rather make those who are living comfortable to be less comfortable and make the junior workers to uh, get involved in, the, in an aspect or in a manner that will make for equity, as the Labour leader has said, All right. that will make for justice and that will make for equality. All right. Honorable Kletus Obun, it's always a very uh, a good one to hear and listen to you and some of the perspectives you share uh, is, is indeed a good one. Thank you so much for joining us and talking to us on the program tonight. But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shion Akimale. Bye-bye.